4.6, uh, last week of new information that we're going to face, 4.6 and 4.8. Again, another specialized topic, which means that this is time for you to, uh, or it should leave you time to go back and master some of your work from 4.1 through 4.4, as well as consider retaking some of your quizzes if that's what you want to do. Again, my best advice is to knock out any makeup quizzes uh, from previous sections now while we're in chapter four and not wait till we're in chapter five when the information all gets mixed together but anyway we've looked at how to solve by factoring um, so a quick sample problem on how to solve by factoring was to look at this say we're looking for numbers that multiply to make negative ten add to make nine I know those numbers are one and ten with a positive ten and a negative one remember I told you earlier since there's nothing attached that these two numbers can just transfer over so x minus one x plus 10 equals 0 which means that I then put x minus 1 equals 0 so x is 1 and I put x plus 10 equals 0 so x is negative 10 and those are my two solutions that I would have the question is what if I cannot factor the equation I need you to remember that higher level mathematicians are not al typically allowed to say there is no answer so whenever you're faced with something it is rare that you can go back to your teacher or to the solutions manual and say there's no answer for this so it means we have to find a way to present something well the quadratic formula solves every quadratic equation uh, as a higher level student you must memorize the formula luckily you should only have to add a few small pieces to that knowledge that should have already been developed uh, so it is a formula you do have to memorize it but hopefully when you see it you'll recognize some of the stuff that's in there because you have seen it before and I hopefully made you memorize it as it is so your quadratic formula is x equals negative b plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. If you look carefully, you should notice the key x formula, negative b over 2a. So if you've been doing what you needed to do, that should already be in your memory. So the only part to honestly memorize is the plus or minus b squared minus 4ac, and I believe you can do that whenever you choose to. So I think the the formula itself again if you need to write it down about usually whenever I'm in class I have or whenever I'm in uh, four weight five weight classes I have the students write the formula down about five times and then you know count to 20 and then try to write it again from memory on a blank side but either way if you write it down a few times I'm sure you'll get used to it I typically try to show you efficient methods of working and the most efficient method I know of dealing with the quadratic formula is as follows even though it's five steps it's five steps that kind of run together. First off, I would always write out the formula. And the reason I would write out the formula is because you're eventually going to have to substitute and whenever you substitute numbers into a formula it is good to see the formula while you substitute instead of doing things from memory while kind of fudging everything else. Second thing I would do is identify A, B, and C and I would literally write out A equals and write it, B equals and write it, C equals and write it, and then that way when I go to substitute I know what A is, I know what B is, I know what C is, and I can substitute into a visible formula. If you want to skip these two steps, you can probably still get away with it, but again, I would definitely do step three, because step three is really where the problem is done correctly. And the reason why I this is crucial for me, or why I do these two steps, is because writing the formula, identifying A, B, and C, guarantees that when I substitute with parentheses, it's 98 percent chance that I don't make a mistake and as long as I don't mess up there I then will show you how to simplify the three main portions after you do that you simplify or calculate the final results again as usual me being weird I will slightly I will work slightly backwards I took out the word because I was deleting the words but anyway so when you do your quadratic formula it's going to look something like this and so when it says simplify that which is what you're going to do most of the time except if it's asking for a decimal is you are going to simplify this radical. Remember 20, if you broke it down to perfect squares, remember those numbers 4, 9, 25, 49 is 4 times 5. It's also a negative there and since 4 comes out as a 2 you end up with 8 plus or minus 2i root 5 over 6. And the reason I wanted to show you this is because sometimes when this happens you can't just divide 8 by 6, you can't just divide 2 by 6, but you and you don't touch the 5 because it's under the root, but as long as all three of these coefficients are divisible by the same thing, you can reduce this, which means that you end up with 8, 2, and 6 all being divided by 2 to make 4 plus or minus i root 5 over 3. And that would be your simplified answer. 
in that problem. And again, most of the time when you're in class, if we were in class, you would be doing all your problems in this form, especially if we took a test on paper. But since your test is not on paper and because MathXL does not allow me to or to um, formulate things the way I like all the time, uh, you are going to be able to do decimal form. So I'm going to talk about that here also. But again, this is the format you're typically going to use because that's the perfect answer. But for MathXL, I am going to have you um, approximate so we can actually get an answer on paper. So make sure you are listening to carefully to this approximation because this is what we will do every time you are to approximate. We will split it. And from there, we will simply type in the top. Let me show you two different things. I am going to type 5.3. Don't type this, but just pay attention to what I'm doing here. 5.3 plus square root of 11.7 divided by 4.6. And I will tell you that this answer is wrong. And the reason this answer is wrong is because most of you are going to type it in this way. Please listen carefully right now. The reason this is wrong is because in order of operations, are we adding first or are we dividing first? And the answer is dividing. And so because we would be doing this first and then adding 5.3, this is actually wrong. So the proper way to type this in is to do 5.3 plus, sorry, square root of 11.7 then hit equals and what this does is it stores the answer a perfect version of this answer in your calculator you then want to do divided by and notice it says a and s if you don't know about calculators and computers that is a storage spot in your computer which is whatever the last answer was and there's like a million digits after this stored in that value you're going to take that answer and divide it by 4.6 and that represents your first number which would be 1.9 you then do the same thing 5.3 minus square root of 11.7 hit equals first and then divide by 4.6 whatever note you need to make for yourself make sure you write that down because that is going to guarantee that um, you need to make sure or guarantee that you are getting the right answer no matter what so again you want to make sure you understand type in the top hit equals then divide by the bottom because if you don't the order of operations is going to throw off your answer and make everything wrong depending on the question you'll need to know both methods again just be sure you took a note of the process and the calculator problem uh, many mistakes come from faulty programming most of the issues that students have whenever they ask questions come from the programming of their calculator so moving on to the second part of what we're going to learn <clears throat> again going backwards we just learned the bottom half of it <clears throat> now what we want to do is look at the top half so we talked about the bottom half, now let's look at the top. Notice each problem from above had three key portions. It had a number outside, it had a plus or minus, then it had a number inside the root, and then it had a number on the bottom. If you focus on these three portions after substituting, <clears throat> then the quadratic formula is far less complicated to work with. So let's just get to the problem so we can figure out how manageable it actually is, because again, it's not that bad once you break it down to three portions. So same as your opening problem, let me give you some proof if I can see it or find it. Here is our opening problem where we had the solutions 1 and negative 10. Again, same exact question. We should get the answers of 1 and negative 10 if the quadratic formula works right and if your teacher is not lost right now. So let's look. Again, my first thing I would do is identify A, which is 1, B, which is 9, C, which is negative 10. I think I did my first two steps out of order, but it's okay write the formula then I would substitute so to substitute I would put negative B again it helps because I have it over here so negative parentheses 9 again make sure you substitute with parentheses plus or minus square root of 9 squared minus 4 times 1 times negative 10 all over 2 times 1 <clears throat> Once you have this part right, you should be in good shape unless you do something crazy on your calculator. So here, here we go. The three key parts. I simplify the outside portion here. It turns into negative 9. I can simplify this easy enough. It's going to be 2. Leave the root and do not type the root. But what I would do is take my calculator and type parentheses 9 squared minus 4, 1, negative 10. And see that I get 121. 
Again, one number here, one number there. Do not type the root because it throws things off when it's not perfect. And then simplify the bottom. Now what I will do is pretty much work it out. So negative 9 plus root 121 over 2 and negative 9 minus root 121 over 2. Remember the square root of 121 is 11, which makes that 2 over 2 or 1. Again, the square root of that is 11, so negative 9 minus 11, which again, negative 9 minus 11 is negative 20 over 2, which is negative 10. Thinking again, those were the answers that we got. And again, to show you proof, unless I'm a magician that can change the numbers, those are numbers we got first. These are numbers we just got. The quadratic formula will find you the answer of every single quadratic equation. The difference is, notice how much work we had to do and how careful we had to be when we were working that out. So it is a positive thing to have in your tool shed, but you do need to make sure that you are um, able to do it appropriately and make sure that you also have time to get it done. <clears throat> I had students in the past who decided not to learn how to solve by factoring because they just wanted to do solving by quadratic formula. And it does have its positives, but let me explain to you that when you need to factor, if you do not practice factoring, then that's going to burn you anyway. So there really is no shortcut. Make sure you learn both methods because as a higher level mathematician, you do need both methods at some point. It's just a matter of what the question's asking you for. So looking at this one, again, this still works. A is, remember, attached to x squared, so that's 5. B, in this case, there is no x is 0. And C is 60. And so again, I will write the formula, negative b plus or minus square root b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. The reason I write it so fast is because I write it with every question. That is also helping you to memorize it a little bit. And then we substitute, so negative parentheses 0. Again, always substitute with parentheses 0 squared minus 4, 5, 60. Yeah, I did that right because nothing's... I am using analysis right now and I'm realizing that 0 squared is 0 minus positive times positive times positive so I'm subtracting a number that's going to be negative and I didn't think that was right but it actually does end up being right anyway simplify your key 3 that would be 0 which we don't need a negative plus or minus I'll simplify the bottom to be 10 and then I'll type this in 0 squared which we really don't need because it's just 0 and we get negative 1200. So what that does to us now is we know it's going to be an i. We know we're going to have to simplify that, so let's go ahead and do that off to the side. Again, using those numbers 4, 9, 25, and 49. And again, it seems like it's not possible, but as long as you're patient, it is possible. 1200 divided by 4 should be 300. 300 can be broken into 4 because it would be quarters. How many quarter, how many 4 is going to 300 should be, I don't know, I'm not going to do that. Actually, I think it's 75. It is 75. So 4 times 75. Uh, 75 does not have a 4 or a 9, but it does have a 25, which is another perfect number times 3. Which means this comes out as a 2, this comes out as a 2, that comes out as a 5. 2 times 2 times 5 would be 4 times 5, or 20, root 3, which means in the end you end up with 0 plus or minus 20i root 3 over 10. Remember that the i is there because of the negative. Now we split it and we work it out. There's no need to put 0 plus, so I would just put 20i root 3 over 10 and negative 20i root 3 over 10, which is 2i root 3 because you divide that by 10, and also negative 2i root 3. Now, if you remember, we also solved this using algebra where we subtracted 60. We divided by 5, and then we square rooted both sides, and think about what the square root of 12 is. That is 4 times 3, which is 2 root 3, with an i, 2i root 3, negative 2i root 3. Do not forget we even had to put the plus or minus. So either one of those methods work. Again, just make sure you're as, I guess I'll say, ambidextrous as possible to where you can do things in different methods, different ways, because that is going to come in handy 
when you get to the work that you're doing. A couple more and we'll call it quits. I think. No, sorry, a few more. A couple means two, a few means three or more. 4x squared plus 6 equals 11x. The rules still apply with the x squared. Whenever you're solving an equation with x squared, remember that x squared is like an elephant on the boat, which means everything must roll over. This is a positive 11x. I need to move it over here and switch the sign, which means it would actually be 4x squared minus 11x plus 6 equals 0. A is 4, B is negative 11, C is 6. Make sure you copy those numbers right. Again, I will write the formula negative B plus or minus square root of B squared minus 4AC all over 2A. S uh, substitute appropriately, so negative parentheses negative 11 plus or minus square root of negative 11 squared minus 4, 4, and 6 all over 2 times 4. As long as you substitute these numbers right, you should be good because once you get here safely, you're okay. Again, if you're good enough to get here without writing A, B, and C and copying the formula, I'm not going to say anything outside of just be careful because, again, these two steps help me to be pretty accurate on that part. Just make sure you can get here safely because from there you should be good. All right. Other than that, um, now we simplify the key three, we get 11. Twenty-five, which is a nice number, and eight. That actually becomes eleven plus five over eight. Eleven minus five over eight. When we split that out, that's sixteen over eight, which is two, and this is six over eight, which is three fourths. So again, two nice answers. Two things going on that we can actually work with to find our answer. You will also see this question on your assessment, on your test, more than likely. And the trick here is, if you're not afraid of decimals, feel free to use your 5 divided by 4 to convert that to the decimal 1.25. Just make sure that you try to get your answer back into non-decimal form, because the only reason you use decimals and answers typically is if there's a decimal in the problem. But I am going to show you how to do this without decimals, which is to eliminate this 4 by multiplying everything in the equation by 4. This turns into 5x squared, this turns into 4x, that turns into negative 32, and notice how that is still 0, and that is why it still works for us, that we can still work that problem out. Where now a is 5, b is 4, c is negative 32. Writing the formula, it's negative b plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4ac, all over 2a and then we substitute carefully negative 4 4 squared 4 5 negative 32 all over 2 times 5 just make sure you're putting the right numbers in the right spot and again from there focus on your key three spots negative 4 10 we just have to find out what's up here which is 656, which means I need to simplify that 656 possibly. So again, I'm going to do my 4, 9, 25, 49 thing. Four times 164, I'm gonna try that with four. Yep. And I'm pretty sure 41 cannot be broken down. I think that's a prime number. And so you bring out a two and a two, bless me which is 4, and so you get negative 4 plus or minus 4 root 41 over 10. And in the end, you simplify all three of those outside coefficients to be negative 2 plus or minus 2 root 41 over 5. And yes, on the computer there will be questions where you have to type it in this form. There will also be others where it has you type a fraction. There will be other ones where it has you type a decimal. Just make sure you're ready for all three because, again, you need to be as ready for every single type as possible. And the last one, which actually represents the first two questions you will see on your work. 
So I want you to see that for yourself. The first thing that that question is going to tell you to do is type in the formula. And so you will type your, um, you won't need to do your A, B, and C, but I will do that because it actually gives you A, B, and C. But it will say type the formula. So you'll type negative B plus, actually in that you'll do plus minus that way because there is no plus or minus button. I hope you heard me because you're going to be emailing me later asking me for that. But negative B plus or minus square root of B squared minus 4AC all over 2A. You're going to have to actually type that in. And then it's going to ask you to substitute using parentheses. And so it's going to give you two boxes with a line in between. So you'll type in the top portion here, the bottom portion here. So again, you will put negative parentheses, negative 5.7 plus or minus square root of negative 5.7 squared minus 4, 7.8, negative 1.9. And on the second box, you will put 2 times 7.8. This is my way of forcing you to show me you know the formula, forcing you to show me that you know how to substitute using parentheses, and that you know how to simplify the three key parts because that's what the next thing is going to tell you to do which is to turn this to 5.7 plus or minus square root of let's see what we get ninety one point seven seven you should round all of those to the nearest tenth make sure you read your directions but it will round you to the nearest tenth so we'll put ninety one point eight all over I think that's 15.6 just to make sure and then of course because there were decimals here we want our decimal answer so this is where it will say type your two answers it'll give you two boxes so you will do 5.7 plus square root of 91.8 don't forget to hit equals first and then divided by 15.6 and round that answer to the nearest tenth. Now here's where you have to be careful. I'm glad I picked this. If I were to round this to the nearest tenth, the 7 bumps the 9 up to a 10, which means that the zeros here, the 1's there, so you will honestly just put the answer of 1 because it doesn't want the 1.0. And then you'll do your 5.7 minus the square root of 91.8 equals divided by 15.6 to get negative 0.2. Okay, I did do that right. So that is pretty much all you need to know in terms of this section. Again, it's a very specialized section, so make sure you practice the quadratic formula. Make sure you memorize the formula by the time you're done with this, because as long as you have that understood, you should be good. Outside of that, again, there's really nothing else to worry about. In terms of solving quadratics, I can tell I was in a rush to finish. Hopefully you accept the challenge of dealing with each type. Remember, you will not typically round answers to the nearest tenth like we did here. Um, the reason I do that is because Math XL does not is really tough to program if I was going to have you do that other stuff. And that you might occasionally have to deal with imaginary answers. Uh, just again, let me know if you need assistance. And good luck. We're almost done.